All right. Welcome, everybody, to this week's Parker Office Hours. Uh, as always, please make sure to follow the CNCF Code of Conduct. Even though we aren't part of CNCF, we love the um, Code of Conduct. So be excellent to each other. Um, with that out of the way, we have uh, a couple of agenda items. Um, I don't know. First one, Frederick, do you have anything that we'll discuss? Sorry, do we have an uh, agenda item? <laughs> I was just looking at this. Um, I don't know. I mean, we can we can go through and and show a bunch of um, new developments in in Parker again. And Sounds good. let me let me share my screen. Make this bigger coming up. Okay. So I think the the biggest changes were to um, trimming and um, kind of like showing um, what amounts of values have been filtered um, or trimmed um, in in the latest release of of Parker. Um, so we can just like walk through that a bit. Um, by default now. Um, Trimming is enabled, and we actually revamped uh, trimming. So before we were always like what what we actually do in Parker is we look at the the width of the of the um, flame graph or icicle graph we have, and then we um, calculate what percentage a pixel has. So like if this are one thousand pixels. Um, one pixel actually has a zero point one percent of of screen estate, and now whenever there is any value, especially underneath the root, we we see if that will ever be bigger than one pixel um, in in its value. So if that's lower, so it means now in our case, imagine having one thousand pixels. If it's below, like the um, 0.1 percent threshold. We just throw away those nodes because we can't even render them ever, and we we won't be able to show them um, in the icicle graph. And right now, it seems like all of those um, values that we have um, were actually big enough, so they were rendered um, in 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 our flame or icicle graph. Let's go for three hours, and maybe this is where this usually shows up a bit more let's see if that worked loading the icicle graph and then if we go all the way down still <laughs> we were good enough i guess let's try six hours because why not um hoping this shows up eventually sorry what are you trying to trigger right now the the trimming Ah, we don't I mean, we don't show this anymore, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You to Sorry, it's in the left tools now. Yes. Left tools. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for for uh, saying something. Um, okay, so the dev tools will actually show this because it's not that important for for the users. But let me copy this over from from the dev tools. Um, I just copied that from the dev tools console. It says that nine thousand samples um, or values have have been removed. Uh, so basically, roughly like four percent. Um, of, of values um, were too small. And usually that means that there were like a, a, a lot of like super, super small stack traces right after the, like beneath the root um, that were just so small, they, they would never show up um, ever because they were smaller than, than pixels. Um, we, we do the same for like every, every other stack trace. So if like this, for example, random thing has, has like the same that like if you click on this and it's still we would also not show this, but I think most um, prominently this would be right after the root. Um, again, this just to save like on the payload um, of of uh, icicle graphs um, and and make those things that actually are the biggest in icicle graphs um, also um, yeah show up and, and and not care about the very very little things too much. Um, and then the other thing is we can now um, search for 
things in here. That's not really a new thing. Um, filter for, for allocations, for example. But then now what is actually new is whenever we hover over anything, you can now see that the cumulative value of this one was uh, 747 um, and that like before filtering, so kind of the absolute value was 0.3%. Um, but now of the filtered um, things, it's actually 70%. So kind of, yeah, like the 70% is what you're seeing in the icicle graph as well now. It's kind of like 70% of the, of the width of the, of the overall, um, um, yeah, profile here. Um, but yeah, uh, it's kind of good to know that like what you're looking at, it might seem a lot. It might seem like 70%, although now it actually, because we filtered only all the stack traces that have contain allocs somewhere in their stack trace. Um, it actually only was like 0.3% um, of um, of those uh, values that we that we filtered um, or that were unfiltered. So only only what we see here, what we are seeing here now, is like 0.3% of of everything in our profile. Um, if it was unfiltered, and if we go further down, we can see that like again, like the better meta store. Um, might seem a lot now. It, it, it is at least like 20% of allocations we have here. But overall, this was only like 0.08% of of um, of uh, allocations or like of the stack traces values that that we had um, if if they were unfiltered. Um, so it's I think it's quite good to to grasp the importance even if something is filtered. Um, but yeah, I think those were the biggest changes to Parker v16, v016, um, anything else we should point out um, that have recently been updated. Let me look at the previous. Ah, yes, Monica also created something amazing I want to shout out, uh, which is like the duration um, in here. So maybe let's go back to 15 minutes. Remove that filtering. And so, yeah. <laughs> that's completely pointless. <clears throat> but um, what what we've kind of worked on and, and Monica implemented in the front end is this like value total duration in the tooltip. So now you can see that um, there were a total of 82 samples in the um, 10 second interval that have been observed by the Parker agent. And you can see this like differs ever so slightly. So even though we um, try to be on a very um, strict schedule, um, the amount of CPU time we have underlying um, differs ever so slightly. So we, we try to um, profile every 10 seconds, but the CPU might, might run, uh, have like a few more seconds of um, CPU time or less. And this is what we can see here. So there were 60, uh, 76 samples in those 10.05 seconds. And um, here we actually had 76 um, samples in 9.96 .9 seconds. Um, so it's just for accuracy and kind of grasping a bit more of what the underlying data looks like. Um, overall, it should, again, like be roughly every every 10 seconds, but it, it really depends on how active the CPU um, underlying is. Um, and ultimately, the um, total, like 242, and then the duration 10 seconds, and all of that gets um, calculated with uh, some some math that Frederick and I have been breaking our heads for like a day or two about, um, was um, kind of coming down to the um, stack traces that we see per second on average, I think is the, the correct thing, right? So here we saw 1.2 stack traces per second or values per second uh, or samples per second. Yeah, because we look at CPU samples. Um, so here we only saw 0.6 samples per second, etc. So this is really what the graph now shows. It's like how many samples per second have we observed? And then the cumulative or like the, the total amount for like the entire 10 seconds would be 337. So just more accuracy and um, kind of surfacing that data. We always had that in FrostDB. Parker was always kind of like storing that. We just 
never gotten around to like properly showcase this to the user or surface it to the user. Yep. Um, yeah, I think those were like the the things that were new in Parker V016. Um, we also had a Parker agent release recently, right? Anyone wants to talk about that? I think we had like Parker agent 015 just the other week. I think one quick uh, shout out about the um, met uh, about the metrics graph. Uh, so I just checked out the uh, like Prometheus metrics um, according uh, to the to like uh, relating to the same um, Parker process, and now we can actually see that it's really really close. The thing with the Prometheus uh, one is that the sampling actually happens much less frequently, so the resolution of this is way better. But you know the general ballpark of the of the data looks very very close, and so that gives me a lot of confidence that this data is super correct. So that was a very long journey, um, and I'm super happy that we're that we're here. People can essentially you know compare these these data points and trust in them, right? That's huge. Just wanted to give a shout out to ev everyone who worked on this, to Monica, to Matthias, um, everyone who, who put work into this. It's super important that people trust trust the system, essentially. Yep, definitely. I, I think what we are talking about is like the um, process CPU seconds total, right? Yeah, I just quickly. I, I threw the link into the. Ah, you already chat. did? OK, then maybe that's easiest for me to open just that and share that tap instead. So we can kind of see that. I guess we can see these two spikes over here, and that is over the last hour. So if we go back to, to Parker um, and go to the last hour, yeah, we can, again, see those two spikes back here. But as Frederick said, they are a lot higher resolution in, in Parker compared to to Prometheus. I guess if we were to like adjust the intervals of Parker agent collecting those, we can get really, really close to to the to the graph and, and Prometheus. We we're the, the thing the thing is actually because we're only we only have deltas in Parker, we actually have like will always be higher resolution than Prometheus. Prometheus is essentially like a sa samples and needs the rate to have multiple data points, right? Whereas we can do the rate within the 10 second interval and Prometheus doesn't even sample every 10 seconds. I don't, I'm not sure what the configuration is, but it's probably at least 15 seconds, if not 30 seconds or one minute even. Yep. So it's very natural that the resolution is higher. Yeah, really good thing to point out on how to to make sure this is like correct. Um, but we also wrote a bunch of LaTeX code to <laughs> to, to check the math <laughs> if that's worth anything. But yeah, to 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 get to get the same resolution in Prometheus as we have in Parker here, I think we would need to do a five second scrape interval um, and then a rate over fifteen seconds. Um, to get, no, it's a three second rate, uh, rate interval and a 10 second, 10 second yeah. um, rate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Which is almost, I don't think I've ever seen that in, <laughs> in reality. I guess you can do it, but yeah, it would be quite overkill for the monitoring system usually. Um, all right. Then. Anything else on, on Parker itself? Then, yeah, let's talk about that uh, Parker agent release. Who wants to to do that? I can go. Um, uh, share my screen. Share my Okay. So it turns out we have had 
two releases, um, uh, 15.0 and 16.0. I was out and it was super awesome to come back and see that there's been so much wonderful work. Um, uh, we have had the usual, like, there, there have been a lot of bug fixes. Uh, and even uh, even as we're talking post these releases, there are like a lot of bug fixes that we've still not uh, documented here. But um, I think one feature that we can first talk about and then go to the bug fixes is um, we were having a lot of issues with short-lived processes. And I think we pretty much uh, figured out that uh, it's going to take quite a bit of overhaul for with the entire process discovery mechanism uh, to uh, change things there. But uh, there have been a few smaller uh, PRs, which have been very effective, I think. One of them is, uh, I think, how is this one? Yeah, so one of them is like populating process mappings on uh, demand. So this again isn't like a hundred percent solution, but mostly it just increases the chances of the processes showing up, or the more more short-lived processes showing up. Uh, if not, we're catch even if we're not catching them all. But um, and I think there were uh, one or two more process-related things. Hmm. This one, I think. So um, this is uh, basically what it's doing is uh, trying to, I think, uh, check for processes more often. So uh, as soon as new, we tend to miss a lot of the new mappings and we're still like seeing a lot of the old mappings, so we can't see new processes. So this one fixes, improves that one. And uh, there was another one to reset process information so we we can only support so many processes and uh, we also uh, realize that we don't clean up old processes so we're doing uh, that better now basically again just improving how uh, how much more we see the processes how much more processes we see and how much faster we see them uh, apart from that I think uh, there were a few community contributions uh, and enhancements. There are a lot of uh, things that have been improved with uh, debug infos uh, and uh, some JIT work also. I'm not super familiar with the JIT parts though, so I'll leave that uh, to Frederick if he wants to talk about it. Um, and But apart from that, I think there have been a few issues that were recently opened um, and like a couple of issues with the system D header and there's like a FD uh, leak somewhere. It seems Park agent is leaking a lot of file descriptors. So we're probably not closing them right somewhere. Uh, there have been some issues with uh, debug infos again. Um, and um, it's, it's super nice that we already have a fix for some things, I think. And uh, so we already have a fix for this one. So it turns out uh, system D, this is one of the system D bugs. I think. And um, thanks to Marcel for this. And apart from that, um, we have a few work in progress PRs for, uh, process. this is the one I was talking about to improve the whole process thing, Kamal and uh, Abir are, I think, working on it. So, and some bits are left, but we're mostly there. And then there's the Java support, and I think uh, Frederick and Vaishali are working on it. Um, we also have, I think, Java discovery was, was it added for these two releases, or was it the one that worked? That was already in 014. Okay, yeah. So yeah, still working on that. And I think I got everything, but is there anything else? Did I miss out something? Uh, 
Uh, just you said that you weren't 100% sure about the JIT part. Um, that was just we had a user who reported very high CPU usage in some JIT um, code paths, um, even though they were not using a JIT at all. Um, and so we just added a flag to be able to turn off everything related to JITs. Um, that's all. So that, you know, they wouldn't experience that CPU, CPU usage for something that they don't use at all. This is the one. That's the one. Okay, yeah. Okay, then. Um, All right, then. That's it. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Any any questions? Kind of opening up Q and A. Anything people wanna ask or answer without questions you can also just answer. <laughs> Make statements. Maybe we can talk a little bit about some upcoming work. Yeah. Sure. So um, I think Thor has given a couple of updates on this already, but it looks like um, arrow ingestion is shaping shaping up to become um, pretty pretty stable. So that's super cool. Um, we definitely had a bunch of um, improvements on the front end as well, but we've got um, the whole team here, so they could talk talk about it themselves as well. Um, yeah, I think those are those are some things, and yeah, there are a bunch of uh, things in terms of Java support that are um, in the works. So I think it's not going to be all that much longer that we'll have a very initial version of um, Java support. Um, it'll be behind a feature flag um, because there's essentially the first solution is kind of like a duct tape solution um, just to uh, to support Java in some way. Um, and then the kind of long-term solution will will take a little bit longer. Anything to shout out from or like get tease basically from from the front end team side? Uh, so one thing I wanted to mention, which might not be visible in the UI itself in Parka, is that. Uh, the entire team devoted some time to uh, setting up Storybook and Storybook publishing with Chromatic. So um, I'll share my screen right now, if I can, really quickly, just to um, just to take everyone through it. Uh, yeah. So this is this is the PR uh, in Parka that introduced uh, the Chromatic setup for publishing. And so uh, it's already been merged, but if I go into the details of the of the pull request, so this is if anyone uh, wants to contribute to the front end of Parka, then they'll see these new uh, additional checks, which will basically uh, allow us to review any UI changes that we make to, to our stories, so uh, to our design system, and then approve those changes. So here we see that the storybook was published. And if we click into details, it takes us automatically to this published uh, version of our storybook. So, so we see our, um, our different components here and we can play with them. And uh, yeah, this is, this is something that basically uh, was one of our, our team goals to, to expand uh, basically our design system and and make sure uh, that we're consistent, that we're using consistent uh, components and styling throughout the the application. That's awesome. I actually have a question on the, um, like if there's an update to one of the components, right? I think there was the, the GitHub action that yeah. says like there was no change, but what, like, how does it look if there is a change, and um, like, how how does like a, a diff of these 
um, components look like? I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, so uh, it's actually something that you have to go into Chromatic itself to review. So for example, this is actually a PR to modify the workflow for Chromatic. There was a PR before this one, uh, which was setting up Chromatic, in which case everything had changed basically in our uh, in our storybook. And so you had to actually go into UI review. And I'll see if it takes me to this. Yeah. Uh, basically, in, in this chromatic uh, dashboard, it would show the components that had changed. And you would have to uh, literally accept the changes. So these are they're like UI changes that you visually accept. So it's not running through any sort of tests for functionality. But for example, if we had a designer on the team, uh, then they could approve basically or or disapprove of any changes that were introduced to the components. Yeah, and I'll just mention that for future work, we'd also like to connect a storybook to Figma and then have one source of truth between our designs and our design system and because of that the application that is so cool like i don't know both both of it like setting up and synchronizing with figma but i also love the idea of of having chromatic and like visually approve these ui components pretty sweet cool. looking forward to to the changes in the design system and then seeing how, how this helps. Yeah, I really love this because now we have kind of, before we are we were, we were already deploying the, the UI against like the live Parker demo, right? But you actually need to, need to know what to look for, right? Um, if you are doing a review. So now it's kind of the other way around, right? Like where it detects that there is a change and you have to look at the change specifically. It would, I, I guess it would also help if people want to then truly also try it against demo. Um, but yeah, I love that it's being much more systematic about the whole thing. Really cool. Awesome work. Yeah. Okay. Any, anything else? If not going once, going twice. Uh, OK, then I guess that's that's it for today. We'll have the next one, the next Parker Office Hours in two weeks um, at uh, 5 PM UTC. Um, I don't know, a bunch of people are probably at uh, traveling to KubeCon around that time, but overall, I think we should be able to have that. And I'll make sure to actually schedule that right now in Discord, for example, as an event. So we don't even forget. And it's like visible for the next two weeks there. Um, but otherwise, follow us on Twitter for updates. Um, we have, um, yeah, we, we, we post whenever the next Parker Office Hour happens there. Um, we also have the Let's Profile YouTube series now where you can, can um, check out more profiling. It's kind of from Polar Signal, it's not from Parker, but I think it's relevant still. And then, yeah, I think we'll see each other in two weeks for more updates <laughs> and discussions. Awesome. Cool. Then have a great day, everybody, and see you then. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.